Today I've got a nice functional equation that was shortlisted for the International Math Olympiad in 2008. So our goal is to determine all functions that are defined on positive real numbers. So positive real numbers are both their domain and their codomain, such that this crazy functional equation holds. So let's see what we have. We have f of w quantity squared plus f of x quantity squared over f of y squared plus f of z squared. And that's supposed to be equal to w squared plus x squared over y squared plus z squared. But maybe one of the important things here that is easy to miss is the fact that we really need wx to be equal to yz. So in other words, this boxed equation only holds when this underlined equation holds. Okay, so what are some things that jump out at me immediately? Well, I would say that f of t squared and f of t all squared are playing similar roles in this functional equation. And that really motivates me to ask the question, are they the same? In other words, is f of t squared equal to f of t all squared? And then the second thing that jumps out at me is how do we use this like secondary equation that wx equals yz implies this in the first place? Well, well, let's actually notice that we can only use this equation if we have this satisfied. So if we're fixing our variables to certain quantities, we want to make sure that that fixing still satisfies this equation. But we'll get to that as, you know, we see fit. Okay. So let's maybe look at this first sort of thing that jumps out at me and see if we can prove this. So this is actually fairly easy to prove and all we'll have to do is set all of the variables equal to each other. So let's set t equal to x equal to w equal to y equal to z. Okay. And then what does our functional equation look like here? Well, I guess before we get started, let's notice that this setup equation holds here because t squared is clearly equal to t squared. So the numerator on the left-hand side simplifies to f of t all squared plus itself, so in other words, multiplied by two. And then the denominator on the right-hand side simplifies to f of t squared added to itself, which is meaning the same thing as multiplying by two. And then the numerator and the denominator on the right hand side both turn into two t squared. So we have two t squared over two t squared, but that's clearly equal to one. So notice we have actually proven our first goal here. We have f of t squared equals f of t squared. Great, which is what we wanted to do here. And that's obviously just by cross multiplying by this denominator here and then like kind of simultaneously canceling these twos. Okay, great. So now where would we like to go from here? Well, maybe we'll rewrite the equation first. So notice rewriting this equation will give us the following. And of course I'm saying rewriting this equation with this new knowledge over here that we can essentially bring the square in or out of the equation as needed. Okay, so now our equation looks like this. We have f of w squared plus f of x squared over f of y squared plus f of z squared equals w squared plus x squared over y squared plus z squared. But now everything is just squared there and that really rises the question is why do we have to work with these squares in the first place if everything is squared? And in fact, we don't have to and that's especially true because we're inside of the positive real numbers. Since we're inside of the positive real numbers here, that in fact means that we can take the square root and that's like a one-to-one -one type of operation. So let's be motivated by this view of our new equation to set the following equalities of new variables. So we'll set w equal to the square root of a, we'll set x equal to the square root of b, y equal to the square root of c, and z equal to the square root of d. 
And now notice if wx equals yz, then that's the same thing as ab equals cd, just by taking square roots. So let's maybe point that out here. Because we're under that assumption over there, we know that AB equals CD. So we may or may not need that, but it's useful to write down just in case. Okay, so let's see what this turns into now. So we have F of A plus F of B over F of C plus F of D equals A plus B over C plus D. And that's really as far as we wanna go with like general variables. Now we'd like to specify some of the values here. So as long as we have AB equals CD, we can specify A, B, and C, and D to be anything we want. So I think this is maybe a good choice for simplification. Let's set A equal well, let's take A to remain free, and then we'll take B also to remain free, and then we'll take C to be A times B and D to be one. And notice that our maybe necessary equation up here is still satisfied because we have A times B is the same thing as A times B times one. We're good to go there. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. Okay, so like I said, A and B are free, so we won't change those. We have F of A plus F of B over F of AB plus F of 1 equals, let's see, we have A plus B over AB plus one. And then before moving on to the next board, we have one more thing that's popped out at us that seems like it could uh, use a little bit of simplification, and that is this F of one. Could we find the value of F of one? Well, we can, and we can do that with this equation that we derived a while ago. So if we plug T equals one here, we'll have f of one quantity squared equals f of one. But there are only two solutions to that in the real numbers. We have f of one equals zero or one. But of course, since we're in positive real numbers here, it's not allowed to be zero. So that means, in fact, we have f of one equals one. So that means I can take this and replace it with simply the number one. Okay, let's start at the top of the next board with that equation. So this is where we ended the last board. For all positive real numbers a and b, this equation holds. And I'd like to point out that we don't have this secondary setup equation anymore because we've reduced this from a four vari variable equation to a two variable functional equation using the fact that the four variables that were underneath this were built out of A and B and they satisfied this green underlined equation. Okay, so now where will we go from here? Well, let's recall something that we had on the last board to motivate our next step. And that thing was that F of X uh, quantity squared was the same thing as f of x squared. And this was true for all x on the positive real numbers. Great. So that was one of the first things that we proved. So how could we get that into the mix here? Well, what if we set a equal b equal x? That'll do it. That'll give us f of x squared here. Okay, so let's see what that does for us. Okay, so setting a equals b equals x will give us f of x plus f of x over f of x squared plus one. And this is now going to be equal to x plus x over x squared plus one. Okay, but notice that this f of x squared can be rewritten using that over there. So let's do that. So this can be rewritten as f of x all squared and then we can combine like terms here. So f of x plus f of x is very clearly two times f of x, 
And, well, this should have been x plus x. I think I said that out loud. That should be 2x. But now we can do a bit of simplification. Notice we can multiply both sides by 1 half or divide both sides by 2, and that gets rid of our 2 here. And now, notice that we have a quadratic equation where our variable is f of x. And that's not super apparent until we cross multiply. But after, after cross multiplying, we're good to go and we see that. So let's, let's do that. So like I said, cross multiplying will give us x times f of x squared. And then what else will we have? Well, we'll have a plus x from multiplying this x through here, and that will be equal to x squared times f of x plus f of x. But now if we could gather this, so it looks like a quadratic equation where f of x is the variable, what would that look like? So we'll have x times f of x quantity squared, and then we'll have minus x squared plus one times f of x, just factoring all that stuff out, and then plus x, and we have that's equal to zero. But now we can use the quadratic formula on this. And if we use the quadratic formula, what will we have? So we'll have f of x equals, well, recall the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of all of that stuff. So our b term here is this negative x squared plus one. So that means negative b will be x squared plus one. And then we have plus or minus the square root of, well, it's b squared. So that's gonna be x squared plus one quantity squared and then minus four times a times c. So that's gonna be minus four x squared and then all over 2a, so that's all over 2x. So that's where we are at the moment. Okay, so now let's do a little bit of a side calculation over here because this side calculation works out so nicely. Let's look at what's happening inside of the radical there. So x squared plus one squared minus four x is the same thing as x squared plus, or x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one minus 4x, that should be 4x squared. But that turns into x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus one, but now that refactors as x squared minus one quantity squared. So we're left with something like that. So kind of inserting that back here, we get some nice simplification. So like I said, that is x squared minus one squared. Now, when we take the square root, well, we technically get the absolute value, but the absolute value doesn't really matter here because we have this plus and minus out front. That essentially takes care of that. So the square and the square root will just cancel, and that leaves us with the following. We have x squared plus 1, and then plus minus x squared minus 1 and then that's all over two times x. And now all we have to do is look at what's happening with the plus and then look at what's happening with the minus. So with the plus, what do we have? So with the plus, the ones will cancel and we'll be left with two x squared over two x. Well, that's simply x. Now, it's probably not a terrible guess from the very beginning that f of x equals x is a solution here because I would say it's a solution to over half of all functional equation problems. Okay, so now what happens if we take the minus part in the quadratic formula? So in that case, we'll have f of x equals, well, now the x squared parts will cancel and the constants will double up. We'll have two over two x or one over x. So there we have it, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.